life giver life changer Jehovah the covenant keeping God destiny helper mountain mover and you are Jehovah you are my life giver Jehovah, a covenant keeping destiny helper, mountain mover, life key. Life changer, Jehovah, the covenant keeping God, destiny hell, mountain mover, Jehovah. alone deserve the glory you alone you alone deserve the honor and the praise in Jesus name we worship give God a clap offering and take your seat amen I want to thank God for this privilege to share the word and bring special greetings to you all from my wife the queen of my kingdom she should have been here but um, I'm gone for a long while so she has to stay back because I'm doing back to back I will get back to preach on Sunday and from Sunday I'm leaving for Turkey so see, I'm living that long she has to just stay back to do a few things but hopefully she should be with me in Baltimore <laughs> we're going to have a mind-blowing program in Baltimore <clears throat> okay I'll make this quick announcement if you are a youth amen all the youths Omega Fire Ministries in America all youths at the end of the service you will wait for a couple of minutes um, Pastor Silas is going to be meeting with you. Um, he's going to be our youth pastor. Our national. Come up here. You need an anointing for that assignment. Come here. And the Lord spoke to me a month ago that I should give special attention to our youths. And we are trying to seriously. And one of my trip, by the grace of God, if Jesus starts next year. America would, would just be for a youth conference and um, we're trying to see how we can take over we are gonna take over so the Holy Ghost spoke to me specifically he said aggressively avert you the word I heard from the Lord is that the harvest of youths in America, in America is overripe that's what the Lord said to me he said it's overripe and he said avert them so we're doing that and after the service just five minutes you know OFM youth all the branches represented you just wait for a while and whatever it is because we need to just come together you know to take over the devil is in trouble we're going to chase him out of town as we're going to chase him out of town and I ask for the anointing for leadership grace for ideas creativity and power and I decree that God will help you. Grace will speak for you. And this anointing of God's spirit 
upon you will take this work to a level that will be mind blowing. Touch. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, everybody. I appreciate you all, pastors of Omega Fire Ministries. Thank you for the spread. Thank you for what you're doing. I was asking Pastor Paul how many churches they have now in America. Huh? 50. 50. Okay, and we'll see. That's nothing. That's nothing. You should be talking of 300, 500. Amen. Glory to God. So, I'll be meeting with the sons of the prophet um, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. And the partners also. Amen. All right. If you have your Bible, break your Bible to Matthew 22. From verse 25 to 29. Like we do back home. I'll read one verse. You read the next one. And um, when we get to 29, we read it together. Matthew 22 from verse 25 to 29. Have you found it? I read 25, you read 26. When we get to 29, we'll read it together. Now there were with us seven brethren. And the first, when he had married a wife, diseased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Read verse 26. And last of all, the woman died also. Verse 28. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 29 together. Want to go? Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God destroying evil patterns. I'm shutting on destroying something will happen in the spirit. As I begin to minister the word of God, I don't know the family you came from, but God whispered into my ears that something will happen in your hometown. While the word of God is going on here, some will happen in your hometown the strong man that has kept everyone bound is about to drop dead the strong man that has kept everyone on the spot that yoke is about to be broken I see you walking into freedom I see you walking into freedom somebody shout I receive I receive I receive take your seat Joshua chapter 6 verse 26 Joshua gave a prophecy and said whoever rebuilds Jericho will do that will lay the foundation with his firstborn and establish the gates with his last son in 1 Kings 18.34 70 years later that prophecy manifested a man called Heel laid the foundation of Jericho with his first son and established the gate with his last child 70 years later it happened how many years? How many years? How many years? In Second Kings chapter 4, verse 16, Elijah looked at the woman and said, By this time next year, according to the time of life, you will bring forth a son. One year later, the prophecy came to pass. How many years? The first prophecy was how many years? The second. The first, the second, 
in second kings 7 verse 1 elijah said by this time tomorrow a measure of flying flour shall be sold for a shaker 24 hours later the prophecy came to pass the first prophecy was how many years the second the third in matthew 26 and verse 34 jesus prophesied to peter he said before the cock crows twice you will deny me six hours later the prophecy came to pass the first prophecy was how long the second the third the fourth in Isaiah 38 verse 1 Isaiah gave a prophecy to Ezekiah he said put your house in order for you shall surely die and he turned to walk away five minutes later the Lord spoke to him he said return the first prophecy was how long the second the third the fourth the fifth I don't know if you are waiting for 70 years I don't know if you are waiting for one year I don't know if you are waiting for 24 hours I don't know if you are waiting for six hours but there is someone under the sound of my voice in the next five minutes there is about to be a breakthrough in the next five minutes your heavens are about to open in the next five minutes God is about to smile on you in the next five minutes you are walking out of trouble in the next five minutes Amen. I see your heavens opening Amen. somebody shout I receive it I receive it take your seat the place where we read please I need you to be calm so you can understand this the Bible tells us a story about a couple of people who met Jesus and said to him there was a family and in that family they had seven men the first one married the wife he died and the wife had no seed customary of the tradition of the day the second guy inherited the woman the third man inherited the second died the third man inherited the third man died the fourth man inherited that same woman the fourth man died no child the fifth man inherited the same woman no child he died the sixth one inherited the same woman no baby died the seventh one inherited the same woman no baby died when the seventh guy died the woman died sounds like a movie right it sounds like a fairy tale how many of you know that there are stories of life when you tell people it's like you are, you are repeating a movie tale there are things you tell people about your life it sounds ridiculous because you don't look it when they look at you they say you sure you went through this you don't look like this you don't look like what you're going through it sounds like a movie if only they understand that you've been through high waters you've been through the mountains you've been through pains you've been through thick and thin but god brought you out of it you've been through the mountain i like what martin luther said i have stood upon the mountains and my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of god we have been through
through a lot but he says when he has tried me i shall come forth as gold he knoweth the way that i take even though he slay me yet will i trust him i will maintain my ways before god yet me child of god you must understand something as a believer never say i am suffering what you say is i am growing because the battles of your life they are meant for your growth the battles of your marriage they are meant for your growth am i speaking to somebody never say you are rejected man's rejection is god's direction when man rejects you god directs you i've come to prophesy under the sound of my voice for your trouble god will give you double for your pain god will give you gain for your shame god will give you fame somebody shout out receive it can i say this to you sometimes the battles of our life you know israel was in egypt egypt was pregnant with israel egypt was pregnant with israel all the ten plagues you saw in egypt we are all contractions we are pregnancy contractions and we know the last stage a woman gets to and we say baby is coming is when the water breaks and that was what happened at the red sea the water broke <laughs> am i speaking to somebody when the water broke it was time for them to walk out god said there is the breaking of the water i am here tonight as a midwife <laughs> to help you deliver your baby that testimony you've long desired the testimony you've long expected today it will come to your hands take your seat this is the last night this is the last night i want to speak some home truths before i give you several keys from that scripture i want to say a few things number one seven brothers write this down satan hates a perfect family in psalm 68 verse 1 he said god set that solitary in families in jeremiah 31 verse 1 he said all families on earth and whom the name of the lord is named the devil knows that the breakdown of family is the breakdown of society the devil knows that the breakdown of family is the breakdown of the church so satan hates a perfect family I have seen blood brothers and blood sisters at loggerheads. Nobody can talk to them. Everyone has tried to resolve them. They would not just give in because the devil is after that family. That is why we are here in Atlanta. That by the power of God, whatever is haunting your family, whatever is seeking your children, whatever is seeking your spouse, whatever is seeking your home, whatever is seeking your siblings, their power will break today. Their power will break today. I see freedom coming for your family. Take your seat. I'm coming. The second thing I I pick from that story. Every young man who inherited that woman did that because they were trying to obey tradition. As far as we're concerned, they are trying to do the right thing. There are so many of us who are going through battles for trying to do the right thing. <laughs> and those who are doing the wrong thing appear to be prospering. Ay, 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 ay. Trying 
to do the right thing. But those who are not doing the right thing, they're prospering. For doing the right thing, they lost their life. You know, I was preaching this somewhere and I said to them in a, in a stadium, I said, these guys were inheriting wives because they were still single when the other guy died. There are some traditions we will violate. I can only marry my brother's wife if I'm still, if I'm still single. Alright? If I'm still single. There are some traditions that we need to violate. One time I woke up and I saw, many years ago, I saw a charm. Okay, what do they call charm in America? Voodoo. Right? Is that what they call it? Voodoo, okay. And I saw voodoo by the door. And I started laughing by my door. And I was about to pick it up. My wife said, no, honey, no. You don't touch it with your hands. And I said, how did they bring it? I am not a nice guy. I am kind, but I'm not nice. Am I speaking to somebody? I speak like that because I have seen battles. I have fought with the beast of Ephesus. I have withstood the bulls of Bashan. I have seen battles. Am I communicating here? I took the voodoo and I went down to the road. I said, Lord, as I break this, I break the neck of whoever brought it. As I break this, I strangle. I annihilate. I assassinate whoever brought this voodoo to my house. You brought a charm? Like David said, I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. He say, has made me a sharp threshing instrument having teeth he says associate yourself all ye people you shall be broken to pieces speak the word for you shall not stand for Elohim is with us am I speaking to somebody here he says in Isaiah 31 verse 3 the Egyptians are men they are not God their horses are flesh they are not spirit who is he that says a thing when comes to pass when the Lord when the Lord commanded it not am I communicating have you not heard have you not known that the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth neither fainted nor is he worried he said there's no searching to his understanding he gave power to the faint even the young man may fall and the youth may fail but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not go weary they shall walk and not faint we are in a new season the season of judgment on the forces of hell God told me specifically some hours ago I am not here to excite you you may not like what I'm about to say but I'm going to say it anyhow he said to tell you someone is about to go down because of you hear me hear me I've come to tell you I've come to tell you the same God who is the lamb of the world is the lion of the tribe of Judah I've come to tell you if anyone attack you attack back someone is about to go down if anyone attacks you attack back you have been too nice it says in Isaiah 42 these are a people robbed they are snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none says deliver for a spirit 
quell and not yet restore. Am I communicating? Redemption is not reduction. You are not redeemed to reduce. It's an error. Am I speaking here? If anyone attack you, attack back. Take your seat. One time in Nigeria, it became a trend in my country. Thieves, robbers, bugglers will break into churches, clear the instrument, take everything valuable. It became a trend. Sometimes big churches would hire security men and they would shoot them at gunpoint, go into their church, take the speakers, take the pulpit, take the mic, take the drum, take the keyboard, take the lead jitter, take the saxophone, and they wake up in the morning on Sunday, and people come to church, the instrument gone. And I was getting angry. It was happening in several churches. There were some churches I considered untouchable. They were touched. And I, you know my mouth is, is a problem. I stood on the altar. I said, if you are a thief, enter here. I said to my people, open the doors. Leave the instrument. Come and steal. And some people say, oh, really? But we'll prove to him. So they sent a guy. They were about 11. They sent one. He came. Some minutes to 10 p.m. at night. And was looking. You know this big industrial fan was looking at the fan and he held onto the fan and was there till 5 a.m. Glued! They caught him in active service. Glued! And I was told and they said, sir, sir, you know what happened? They said, they just broke into the church. The young man is there now. The young man is there. If we mobilize, I said, he's not my church. Let the owner take care of the church. <laughs> when that happened to him, that was the end. Young men would tell themselves, you, you can still go to Omega. <laughs> go and try that there. Why? Someone has got to be rebelliously angry. You don't pamper Satan, you hammer him. You don't manage him, you damage him. Satan is wicked. If you take D from devil, it's still evil. Am I speaking here? You've got to make up your mind to fight. If any man attack you, yeah, me. Seven young men wasted because none reacted. Seven young men extinct. Seven young men. And when they died, she died. When she was done, she died. To break patterns, write this down. Number one, you must understand the mystery of the first dawn. So long the enemy got the firstborn, the siblings were in trouble. How many of you are firstborns in your family? This is deliverance of the firstborn today. The firstborn is the symbol of power. The firstborn is the symbol of authority. In Genesis 49 verse 3, Jacob said, Reuben, thou art my first so what is your assignment excellency of dignity excellency of power my might my strength now these are the attributes of a firstborn might strength excellency of dignity excellency of power if the firstborn doesn't get it right the siblings are in trouble I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If the firstborn 
That is why in Hebrews 12, 29, Jesus became the firstborn among many brethren. And to the church of the firstborn, the church of sprinkling, that the, speaks, that the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, he became the firstborn. I make declarations into the atmosphere by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every firstborn here, a firstborn in your family, I prophesy upon them and I make a declaration that the spell is broken. The yoke is destroyed. I see them walking in freedom. I see them walking in liberty. I see them walking in grace. The power of God setting them free. The power of God setting them free. Somebody shout, I receive. God said, Go! Tell Pharaoh, Israel is my first born. Exodus 4.22 He said, let my first born go. God is very jealous over first borns. So those of you who are first born, you think it was a coincidence. You are not a biological mistake. You are not a genetic error. You are not a product of a man and a woman who lacks self-control. You are a deliberate, intentional project. You are a seed of God. All the firstborns, raise your hand. As you hear the sound of my voice, every one of you here, I decree your royalty is restored. Your dignity is restored. I decree your might is restored. I decree be established. I decree grace on your life. I decree speed on your life. By reason of your deliverance, your siblings are free. By reason of your emancipation, your siblings are liberated. Every family here, I project myself into such families. I speak over the lives of the firstborn seed, male or female. I speak their liberation. I speak their deliverance. Somebody shout, we are free! First born. Number two, I'm going to offend your sensibilities now. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Not everyone with flesh and bone is a human being. <laughs> that doesn't sound American. I went to school a bit. At school. But I can tell you. Witchcraft, witchcraft is real. Witchcraft, witchcraft. I have been in deliverance ministry for 29 years and I can tell you. And the manifestation of witchcraft is in three dimensions. Number one, domination. Witchcraft. There are people they want to dominate. No one should rise. That's witchcraft. The rising of other people itches their ears. The success of others causes them confusion. No matter what they have, they believe no one else should have. Domination. Domination. I'm sorry to say, there are people in the health sector who are witches. 
Uh, there are people in uniform who are wizards. <laughs> there are people in ministry. <laughs> ministry, pastors. They can't stand the success of another. Come, Osi. If this young man is not putting on a good suit, for example, does it make my life better? I'm a pastor. He's a he's a pastor. If he's dressing well, it endorses my calling. God does not bless you at the expense of another person. I bought a car. I didn't take yours. I bought a house. It was not yours before I bought it. Why are you angry? Must we all be poor? Witchcraft. Domination. Someone said to me, can someone be a witch without knowing? Yes. So I'm telling you the symptoms. So if you have it, domination. How could the lady wait? Dr. Fide, she waited till seven boys died before she died. Why did she die late? Why did you die after the seven died? You came on a mission. Anyone sent on a mission to ruin your life. Uh-huh. Anyone sent on an assignment Hi-ya. to cause you pain. Hi-ya. In the name of Jesus, Hi-ya. I terminate the assignment. Hi-ya. I break the spell. Hi-ya. I terminate the assignment. Hi-ya. I terminate the assignment. Hi-ya. Yeah, me. Take your seat. Let me speak to you. Hear me. Your life is not a charity organization. Those of you that bring in people into your house without a background check. I have been a victim of that. Without background check. Because you are trying to be nice. I need to help them before my family sees me somehow. Who cares? Who cares? Who really cares? There was a time in, there was a time in my house I had almost 21 people living. Some of them I don't know their father, their mother. I was just trying to be nice. And a young man said, he was talking to another young man after I kicked him out of my house. He said, Apostle, nobody can kill him. They were confused. He said, I poisoned him six times. I poisoned him six times. And I ate it. So when I'm talking, I'm talking as a custodian of truth. On assignment. I'm going to surprise you now. There are men who are not husbands. They come into your life. To ruin it. There are ladies that are not wife materials. They are from the marine world. There's a pastor. 
he got married to a woman. Anytime he's getting ready to go to program, he's prayed, he's put on the suit, the wife will walk into the room and take off her clothes. He said, I want you now. He said, but we've been here since I'm dressed to go. He said, no. I'm your wife. Of course, she's the wife. He will take off his suit and manifest. <laughs> when he is done, he puts on his clothes. He is empty. Goes to the pulpit, empty. He comes back for the next day meeting. Pray, pray, pray. He walks to the wife, say, please, if you need me now, tell me. He said, no, 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 no. Go do your program. When he is dressed, she comes to the room. Takes off her clothes. I need you now. I'm your wife. He takes off his clothes. Manifest. One day, he said to her, mm -mm, let me return. He said, what do you mean? He said, let me return. He left. The lady went into the kitchen, took a knife, got a knife, and cut her wrist. The husband was on the pulpit, and she walked into the church bleeding. He said, he's a liar. Don't listen to him, he's a liar. He wants to kill me. He wants to kill me. The husband was, are you crazy? I'm bleeding. And when your wife accuses you, that day was the end of ministry. An agent. <laughs> a young man walked into my office with a girl, pretty girl. And he, he looks fearfully made. She was wonderfully made. So when you walk in, I said, who is this? He said, my fiance. I said, how? This is the beauty and the beast. How? And the Lord said, look at her. I looked at her and discovered she walked into my office on her head. And I said, young girl, did you, did you check me? there are places you don't enter like this go out and come in well so the young man said she's, she's well dressed I said shut up you are daft <laughs> go out she said I'm sorry she went in and walked in when she got in I told the young man sit I said lady stand I said why are you here he said I want to marry her I, I don't miss words to your face I said don't don't marry her. I said, lady, you know what I'm saying. He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the young man said, um, actually, I've seen. You see, some people don't actually come for inquiry. They come for endorsement. I've seen uh, 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 people, my people are comfortable with her and everything. Genesis 6, 3. My spirit will not strive with men. So I said, go ahead. They got married. Of course, not in our church. I don't wed agents. They got married. One year, bought a car. Sent me a text. Said, God's hand is in this marriage. He bought a car. Attention is not concern. Two years, the lady foundation of the house. The third year. He had an accident and lost his legs. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And when the lady heard. The first thing that came out of her mouth. He had an accident. Lost his leg. He was alive. The first thing that came out of her mouth was. How did he escape? A lady was in labor for days. Now, women can tell you what it means to be in labor for days. One week, two weeks, three weeks. Labor. 
For days, the husband was confused. He had prayed and he ran to me. He said, my wife, she's in pain. She's lost strength. But I insist it will not be to a cesarean session. And he kept, while I was praying with him, I saw a woman sitting in the hospital by the lady's bed. And I said to him, who is sitting with your wife? He said, yes, my mom. My mom is taking care. I said, so long your mom is there, your wife cannot deliver. He said, I don't understand. I said, let your mom leave. I said, your mom has been sitting and refused to stand. He said, that's true. I said, okay. I was not done. In fact, he forgot his phone. He just jumped up from his and started running. Where are you going? Where are you going? As he got there, he uprooted his mother. Carried as he lifted out, the baby came out. We live in a world of powers. It's an error to be empty. Wickedness is real. But God said, I give unto you powers over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall buy any means any means he said behold i see satan fall from heaven like lightning i make a declaration Amen. every agent of hell Amen. projected into your life Amen. projected into your church projected into your business into your organization Amen. into your career Power. i terminate the assignment Amen. You see the way the Bible put it down, Pastor? He said, last of all. That was the last in the agenda. Last of all. The woman died also. When she was done. So this is my assignment today. I came to tell the Lord. I came to tell the Lord. Let there be a separation between light and darkness. Yeah. Satan has gone too far. He will go no further. Yeah. See, there, are, there are testimonies I can share. I, I, I could share them in Africa. They will understand better. Everything works for you guys here. Everything works for you. Everything works for you. Life is so easy. You want to buy a house, you do a down payment. <laughs> Nigeria, down payment. You want to buy a house, you can pay for 20 years. Life is so easy. You file, you file in for tax, you get tax returns. Nigeria, tax returns. Tax never enough. Richard. Exemption. So life is so easy. So there are some things I will say you don't understand. A lady, can I talk to you? Hmm. I wish I wish I could share this with you. A pastor was giving a word and they had an award ceremony. The best usher of the year they gave a plaque the best behaved choir member of the year they gave a plaque the best protocol member of the year they gave a plaque when they get the plaque of the award to the best usher the wife reacted and he felt it was a woman thing she's just been over unduly possessive she said see, this lady it's not a Christian. They must say, ah! Don't go there. Why are you like this? Why are you like this? If you are in ministry and your wife tells you something, you better listen. Hmm. When a woman identifies and spots another woman, you don't understand. Only a thief knows a thief.
Now, this may sound crazy. If you are not comfortable with my wife, you've lost me. You've lost me. We can't relate. It's not possible at all. If my wife tells me this person, I don't wait for her to finish it. You are, you are deleted. That's the truth. Because I have tried many times to be ministerially correct. And it got me in trouble. You know, a woman can smell deception a, a, a mile apart. And a man can see deception under his nostrils. And the pastor said, you are just being possessive. Because you feel I'm free with her. I, I laugh with her. I, I, I need to encourage these people. Two weeks later, God opened his eyes. He saw the lady sweeping. She was not sweeping stuff. She was sweeping people. Sweeping people out of the church. The pastor saw it. And he woke up. He told his wife. You see, when you, if, you are, if you are called to ministry or business, whatever, and you tell your husband stuff and he says no, don't argue. Just leave him. Pray. My wife tells women all the time, say, stop arguing. Go to God in prayers. He will come back. And the man opened his eyes. So he said, I'm going to do something. So that Sunday, the next Sunday after the award, he said, today we are going to do something strange. Everybody was wondering. He said, we are going to do something very strange. All the workers stand up. They stood up. He said, one, two, three. We are in the protocol department. They said, yes. He said, switch into the choir. One, two, three protocol. They began to interchange them. So he got to the lady. He said, lady, switch. You are the head of the usher department. Say yes. One, two. Leave the usher department. Go into the choir. The lady screamed. I go nowhere. I am not going anywhere. The man said, I don't understand. You've been very effective here. I need you to impact the people in the choir. And those... He said, I go nowhere. It's okay. You don't like the choir. Move to the protocol. Nowhere, sir. And the pastor stood up. The wife stood up. And they began to pray. And she began to manifest and began to confess. My duty is to stand as the usher. Everyone I give a handshake will never return. Everyone I give a seat to sit on we never return. You can't change me. I have not finished my assignment. Church! Church! <laughs> A young man invited me for his baby dedication. In <laughs> A city like 10 minutes drive from our church. I was done with service. I told them I'll come there by 12. And I finished counseling, so I drove. We got to the baby dedication. It was a crowd. And I told the pastor, I said, I'm supposed to be dedicating baby. What is all these crutches, wheelchairs? He said, he said I'm in trouble, sir. Said, I said, since I said you are coming, I'm in trouble. I said, no, no I'm not here for this. I just want to dedicate the baby. I lifted the child, something came upon me. They call it anointing. And I said, there is someone here with a charm to kill this baby. Child of God, I tell you, I was expecting the person to come from the crowd. I said, I'm going to come to three. If you are not out, you run mad. The person who walked out from the altar. I'm on television, so I'll stop there. Walked out from the altar. 
In fact, when I saw, may God open your eyes. When I saw this lady walked out, I felt, I said, go back, go back, go back. Because she looked spiritual, no earrings, ear tied and head covered, long gown, no makeup. Open my eyes. 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 I reject spiritual blindness. Open my eyes. When my wife had my first child, my wife died. Died. The doctors had told me to go get stuff. And that was the first baby. I didn't know what to get. I was actually confused. So get a plate, get a cooler, get a spoon. I actually got a cooler and got a shovel. I was, I was, I was just... But I got to the hospital and a lady walked to me and said, Apostle, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. So I said, what is the Lord giving? And what is the Lord taking? That scripture came from Job. Not from Christ. Job was having a very bad day. So that scripture does not concern me. What is the Lord giving? And what is the Lord taking? I walked in. I saw that they had covered my wife. Dead. And I touched her hand. She was cold. When I started ministry... Omega Fire Ministry, not ministry in general, Omega Fire Ministries, 17 years ago. I hardly preach. I just walk to the pulpit and start prophesying. When were you in my program in your church then? 1993. Do I preach? I don't preach in the past. I just walk to the pulpit, you sing. I don't carry the Bible. I just start prophesying. Five hours, six hours. Everywhere is packed. No word. People get all kinds. And I felt I was manifesting. I never knew I was in trouble. I never knew I was in trouble. So we started ministry then. My wife died. I looked at her. I said no. I looked at the baby. The baby was alive. Beautiful girl. I looked at her. Then I said no. And I remember people were crying. Take heart. God understands. So many nasty statements. Such is life. How is death life? Such is life. Life is full of up and down. No, the Bible said the path of the just is like a shining light that shined more and more. So I remember the principle of raising the dead. Put all the doubters out. Jesus sent them out. Said nurse, make sure out. I held a hand and I began to pray. I was praying in tongues. The Lord said, why are you praying? Worship me. And I began to worship. She opened her eyes. Came back to life. Hold on. And I was seated. My phone was on fire. I came downstairs for the story building and I called a few people and a woman who was a leader in church heard and she said mommy has given birth she started laughing he said where is she now they said she is alive she said how she gave birth normally say yes and guess what she said did she vomit the child she's alive she says how few 
two days after that, the lady lost her mind. She ran mad. I, I have seen battles. So when I speak to you, I'm speaking as a custodian of truth. Not everyone with flesh and bone is human. There are agents from hell. There are agents projected from the water world. Agent projected from the witchcraft kingdom. Agent projected into marriages and homes, into businesses and organizations, into careers and destiny. I am here by the power of God to put an end to the manifestation of demonic spirits and demonic agents to stop their powers, to terminate their assignment. You will not marry an agent of the devil. Amen. You will not marry an agent of the devil. Amen. I say you will not fall a victim. Amen. Be upstanding. The Lord is telling me something. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. Thank you, Lord. Money. He knows my everything. He sees each tears that fall, and he hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees tears that fall. He sees tears that fall. And he hears me where I call. I say, and he knows my name. Ashala bala bala yala bala da yala bada yala dash. He knows my every thought. Oh, wala bashata. He sees the tears that fall, and he hears me when two more times. Oh, he knows my name. He knows. My everything, it's in the steel that fall. Yes, I know. One more time. Yes, he knows my name. And he hears me where I call. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He sees the tears that fall. He sees the tears that fall. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every touch. One more time. Oh, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. He sees me. He sees me. 
I was in the UK in London and I was walking towards the car I just got out of the elevator and the protocol ran took my Bible I was walking towards the reception to walk into the car there were some Africans obviously who knew me so I them, is that not Apostle Suleiman is that? so they ran Apostle Apostle you are in London. I said, yeah, I have a program. They knelt down. And I was laying hands on them. And I saw a lady, a white lady. And she was asking them, who is this man? They said, he's a, he's a pastor. A man of God. I said, man of God? She said, man, I know. God, I know. Man of God, I don't know. I know man, I know God. What is man of God? He said, a preacher. I said, oh, a priest? Obviously, she was from the orthodox faith. So yes. I cannot have dropped on the conversation. So I said, please come. She said, me? I said, you come. <laughs> Why? I said, just come. She came. And I said, what did you say? She was not happy that people were kneeling down. I said, why are you kneeling down for him? They said, he's a man of God. He's a priest. He's a priest. Just a priest. So she came and I said, you've been married for five years. You don't have a child. She said, what the heck? How did you know that? I said, your mom lives in your house. She said, wait a minute, what's going on? I said, I'll see you tomorrow. I walked into the car. The next day in the morning, the intercom was on fire. So I had to disengage the phone so I could rest. The receptionist came to my room and began to knock the door. I said, what, what, what's going on? They said, please, we apologize. We don't do this, but you have to come downstairs. There is someone trying to create a scene. I said, okay, have I done something wrong? They said, but she's calling your name. She said, you were here, the preacher, the man of God. He said, you are the only pastor in this hotel. Got out to some rough clothes and I came downstairs. I saw the white lady. When she saw me, she knelt down. I said, why are you kneeling down? I'm just a priest. She said, no, you are a man of God. Now, hear this. How do I say this? She said, my mom lives in my house. She said, I've been married for five years, actually. I don't have a child. She said, some minutes to 2 a.m., I woke up because I was pressed. Is I'm actually going through my monthly flow. He said, I went... I used the restroom. I was looking for my mom. I went to her room. She wasn't there. And I saw my mom near the kitchen. Sitting by the dumb start. You know the dumb start? The dustbin. Garbage. You see, and I saw my mom with my menstrual pad. Sucking the blood. She was... The blood! You see... He said, I've been here since morning. They wouldn't let me in. Help me. My mom does voodoo. I said, no, your mom is a witch. But today, that's why we came. There are people in your life who have no business being in your life. There are people
people in church can i say this to you pastors there are some people until they leave a church you can see an explosion they are just there like principalities and powers there are some people until they walk out of your life you can't get an explosion because their presence attracts evil he said cast out the corner and contention will cease can i prophesy cast out the corner and contention will cease i come into your life and i cast out the corner i command contention to cease i cast out the corner i command contention to cease we are going to pray a prayer that is so un-american so un-american are you ready if you are a pastor pray it if you are a member pray it if you are a businessman pray it everyone pray it it's an american it doesn't sound nice it doesn't sound nice but for our destiny we got to be brutal you have to be lethal you have to be acidic and corrosive offensive aggressive 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 are you ready everyone projected into my life to cause me pain are you ready everyone anyone projected into my life to cause me pain what god is about to do to them let me show you let me show you before we pray let me show you i say i'm sounding on american if you have your bible open it to deuteronomy 28 28 i'm sounding on american and you will read it after the count of two loud and clear what god will do to them deuteronomy 28 28 have you found it deuteronomy 28 28 have you found it want to go anyone projected into my life to cause me lord arise smite them with madness and blindness deuteronomy 28 28 smite them with madness and blindness are you ready? Say in the name of Jesus. My father, my father. As I begin to pray. Anyone projected into my life. To cause me pain. Lord arise. Smite them. With madness and blindness. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Tada, 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 tada,